Hello, I am Drag, and this will be the last video I post for this year. It has been, as they say, a very long time coming. But it really hasn't been, because I just found out that this movie that I will be reviewing in this video came out... Was Well, actually, it was written, shot, and released in 2020. How great is that? Unfortunately, I made the mistake of looking through some interviews with the actual, like, writer, director, producer, and lead star, and I learned that they were an actual person, so that might make tearing into this movie a bit more difficult for me. So, I will do my best. I hope that I can keep it coming. You shall see. So, today's movie is called A California Christmas. I know, the title is... Very, very forgettable. Incredibly forgettable. When I was actually going to stop this, I, I no joke, forgot what the title of this movie was. Mm. Okay. The movie starts with our lead male protagonist, whose name I think is Joseph. I'm pretty sure it's Joseph. And he is going to work. He is a business professional they never actually say what he does at this business but he is the son of the mom and the mom is the ceo of this business and he is riding to work in a motorcycle he's like wearing his full work get up and it's, it looks really ridiculous because he's going to work rather than you know a spy in this in the streets of britain being chased down by other spies that want to kill him you know it's just not and he is assigned to go to this farm or ranch i should say and swoon them over to get them to sell the land that is his purpose he's like what well, i don't want to do that so he does it anyway because you know if he doesn't then he'll be disowned by his mom so he goes to he goes to this ranch in pentaluma california which is near San Francisco. And he's like, he, he was initially going to go there in his full like suit get up, but he can't because on the way, he in the most awkward scene spills the coffee on himself. And it's like really one drop and it's really not noticeable if you actually like look at it. But uh, he's like, oh, I can't wear this. I have to change my, my whole outfit. So he does from some clothes that his butler had planned on donating. Basically, it's just to show how selfish he is and everything. And when he gets to the ranch, they are birthing a cow. The younger daughter, or the younger sister, I should say, con confuses him for the new ranch hand named Manny. So they are calling him Manny for the majority of the movie. They establish that ranch hands often come one or two days late for the job. So female lead is birthing a cow and she's just like, oh, okay, oh, oh you're the new, <clears throat> you're the new ranch hand. Come over here and help me deliver this cow. And so he does, and he like gets all this gunk on him and whatnot. The movie has given us the indication that they have been through several ranch hands. So you think that she would want to be more hospitable, more courteous to him, but no, she gives us this cold, brusque, just, really awful human being vibe and she's just like oh oh no no fuck you you're not that this is this is where you'll be staying the generator's not working in your trailer so you might want to start with that you get one strike and you're out and it's just are you kidding like no and then and then at the end she's like oh so are you up for the job i would say no to that even if i needed the money but no like and then the sister the younger sister brings up the uh, callie her name was callie Okay, so Callie, Callie, the female lead, goes through all that, and then the younger sister, whose name I actually can't remember, is, um, she brings him some donuts. She's like, oh, oh, here, here's some donuts, like, in case you haven't had breakfast. And then Callie is just, no, she's not hungry, right? He needs to get to work. And then they start work at six, which another thing. 6 a.m. is really late, especially for a rancher, because the sun has... Well, okay, okay. We're led to believe that this is supposed to be happening in the winter, but I know a movie that was filmed in the summer when I see it. So the little sister brings out the donuts, or whatever they were, and the older sister... You know, I'm just gonna call her female protagonist, Protag. So female Protag is just, like, you know, basically being a bitch. Male lead just goes goes on, like, doing the work day, which he is doing really fast for somebody who has lived the pampered life. And he basically finishes all of his chores. He finishes them relatively fast. At the end of the day, 
he didn't refill one of cow troughs or whatever. He, it wasn't on his list of things to do, but female pro tag or female lead is just like, oh, that's strike one. Remember, strike one, he's out. And then she goes, gonna go and fire him after she gets some cow feed, but she can't reach it. She needs the ladder, but she can't even reach the ladder, which... Which makes me, which is just like, okay, so how have these cows been eating if you haven't even been able to reach the ladder to get to the feed? So she goes to get him, and when she gets him, he gets the ladder down, and then she gets the food, and she's like, oh, it's expired. And my whole family, we kind of stopped at this, and was like, I don't think the cows care if it's expired or not. This whole scene is just so that they can uh, embrace each other, because one of female pro tag, female lead, fell off the ladder, and it was really bad. It was really bad when that happened. I'll get into it later. The prob- why? Why? Because these two don't really have any chemistry at all, but, I mean, we're gonna be led to believe that they do. <sighs> But she's all she's got her hair all done up and she's supposed to look she's supposed to be looking fine and everything, but we can't because our first impression of her is oh she's a bitch. She has nothing redeemable about her. And the reason why her hair was all done up is because she also works a uh she also is a bartender. She's a bartender on top of being a rancher, on top of however else However, other many jobs they gave her. From what I understand Oh, oh, yes right, that's right. They actually bring that up. And um, he asked her, like, oh, when do you find time to sleep? And she's like, oh, sleep is overrated. No, she's one of those girls. She's not like the other girls. She's one of those girls. Oh, oh no, I forgot a shot. Okay, earlier on in the movie, I don't have my notes for this one because the movie is so by the books. So earlier in the movie, when they had the whole gun scene, we find out that her, right after he arrived there, we find out that her mom has cancer. She is the best cancer looking patient, cancer patient I've ever seen because her hair was on. But, mm, her hair looked good. The only time that she ever really looked sick was when they were, whenever she was out and about. But earlier in that scene, a guy with very, very curly hair, so I'll call him curly hair, walks into the house. He's, um, he is the friend of the ex fiance of female lead. And we find out that female lead's dad and fiance died. Anyway, curly hair walks in there, like he's trying to court her and everything. She's like, oh, I'm just not interested. But she pulls a gun on curly hair. And this was a joke from earlier where she said that she was going to shoot a person who was there to propose the, uh, the, for the proposal on their land. She was gonna, you know, shoot them. And that was implied. But the joke here doesn't really work because that's in your kitchen. Did you think that they were just gonna roll up into your kitchen and then just like, oh, hey, I'm here to acquisition the land. No, no, okay. So that doesn't work. That doesn't work. But, you know, she denies curly hair, and I'll just cut back to to later on that night. So at the bar, we see female lead doing the bartender thing, but male lead doesn't know how exactly they dress. He doesn't know how country folk, quote-unquote, dress. At the bar, they male lead comes in dressed like a TV cowboy, very prestige. Basically what inner city folks think cowboys dress like every day. And so he's dressed like that. And then his butler, who, who I thought was his dad, and the, the ranch hand that they paid off show up. Connor somehow knows Manny, but doesn't know that Manny isn't the same Manny that male lead is pretending to be. And it does, that also doesn't make sense. Connor is Connor. Oh, Connor. Connor is curly hair. Curly hair's name is Connor. I will be switching back and forth from that. Get used to it. So, curly hair is drunk at the bar somehow, like he's suddenly incredibly drunk, and tries to make a move on female lead. But it, he rolls up on her and kind of grabs her waist. And the problem with this scene and the scene that it leads up to is that we have been led to believe that female lead would punch somebody, especially in a bar. They just like randomly walked up to her and grabbed her like that. She doesn't do that. She's like, oh, you, you're drunk. Go home. And so then Mel Lead steps in and is like, oh, oh, what are you doing? Is there, is it? But she said, she said to let her go. It's showing that he doesn't know how to de-escalate a fight. Because, you know, that's, those are actually fighting words, believe it or not. That's why they always say, oh, is there a problem over here? Because then, you know, that gives them an out. That's, that's, that's. That's kind of how de-escalation works. It's not, she said, let, let go, unless you're trying to pick a fight. So male lead punches curly hair in the face, which doesn't do anything because male lead is an inner city boy who has never actually done a hard day's work in his life, you know, except for the day that he was there. Curly hair is 
you know, a country boy who has worked on a ranch the majority of his life. So it doesn't really affect him, and he just kind of beats the crap out of him. And then female lead breaks a bottle and like, Oh, get out! Both of you, get out! Which was actually kind of the right thing to do, because you don't want to pick favorites, because as long as one of them is in the bar, the mood has kind of been brought down. After they both leave, they, uh, it's, it's the next day. The next day at the ranch, male lead is waking up at six, and... This movie was filmed in the summer, and I know that it was filmed in the summer because 6 a.m. in the summer looks very different than 6 a.m. in the winter. His trailer was flooded in light, which tells me this is a summer. This this is the summertime. I was like, eight? That would be eight o'clock? But then that leads me to my next point. My brother was saying if his workday starts at six why is he waking up at six so not only is six incredibly late for a rancher to be starting work it's also why why is he waking up at the time that he's supposed to be reporting to work but he's working on something it was her dad workshop and she is oh she's suddenly really nice to him and everything but she says that curly hair was harmless that line might not seem like a lot but it actually is because that bar scene could have been where the the turning point would be. But because she completely discredited it by saying curly hair is harmless, I wasn't in any real danger, that immediately undercuts what he did. So her whole 180 on this worker is completely moot because we, we haven't seen, we haven't seen anything that would make her warm up to him in one day when she was being very rude before. So now female lead is nice. This is actually one of the problems with self-insert characters. The problem with a self-insert character is that their thought process isn't being conveyed like the other characters' thought processes were because the author, who is inserting himself into the story, already knows why. They already know what the character is thinking, but they don't exhibit that. And the that's the problem. The problem is that they don't exhibit it. So when the character makes a complete 180, then everybody just goes along with it. The audience doesn't because it's like, oh, that that was completely out of left field. Why did that happen? So no, yeah, that that's that's kind of the problem with this particular self-insert character. And I would say other self-inserts too. They don't they don't explain or or they don't convey. That's the word convey. They don't convey the thought process of why this character is doing what they're doing and that's why they often come up come across as a terrible person that's why the praise that they get is just like wow okay i don't the audience doesn't get it the people in the universe do and then that's when you get a mary sue and that's that's a whole other thing a whole other thing okay suddenly female lead is being nice to him and then the sister comes and then they just like do all that in this scene you could tell that there was supposed to be a romantic kiss scene But since the younger sister was there, they couldn't have it. They say something innocuous and the male lead looks like he was supposed to kiss her, but he doesn't. And it was really weird because it wasn't the character that looked like he wanted to kiss female lead. It was the actor. It was at this point that I looked up who the author of this was and then it all started making sense. Because up until this point, they've been giving each other like kind of the googly eyes, but it wasn't the characters, it was the actors. The female lead is the wife of the male lead. They are spouses. They are in love spouses. And that explained everything up to that point. So after that whole awkward scene, the uh, workshop, they then cut to dinner. But this time, female lead has invited male lead to eat with them. I I am not very well versed as far as the feeding accommodations are for for a ranch hand, but I'm pretty sure that they eat with the family unless unless it's in their contract, which is a whole other thing. People don't realize that it's an actual job and you have to sign a contract so that they can, you know, taxes and stuff. Like it's an actual job. But as far as I was aware, like room and board. So you get a smaller paycheck, but that's just so that you have a place to live and you you know, your your meals are are, are paid for. They they do this whole thing and he's like, Oh, um, they have this really awkward dinner scene where they're praying and Mel Lead opens his eyes because he feels kinda awkward about the whole praying thing. And when he does, he sees female lead just staring at him. This is terrifying to me. And it was terrifying to everybody in my house because when you're praying at the table, 
everyone's eyes are closed. So when you open your eyes and then you see somebody just staring at you, that's that's terrifying. Then female lead has to go do something. I forgot what it was. And then the mom was saying um, how she's she's not as tough as she acts. She's not as tough as she looks. She basically says, you have a job for the, for the spring. So, so for those who don't know, generally ranch hand positions, they're seasonal. Just because you have a job in the spring doesn't mean you'll have a job for the summer. Doesn't mean you have a job for the fall, et cetera, et cetera. But generally, as far as I'm aware, they're not really seeking help during the winter because winter is generally the slow season. That's where you need to cut back. So it doesn't really make sense why they would be hiring help in the middle of winter, especially around Christmas. But she confirms that he has a job for them. Then we cut to the butler and the real many. I haven't really been talking about them much because they don't really impact the plot until right around now when it is made known to male lead that Manny has like an expert tongue and he's like really good at tasting wine and he can pick out all the flavors in it. But the scene is also there to show that curly hair is been, has been uh, stalking male lead to get like information on him because he has a vendetta against him and all that bullshit. So after that, then we learn that the mom is like saying, yeah, no, like your time is up. We're going there like by next week or whatever. And they are looking for male and female lead. This is, this is another day. I made it sound like it was the same night because the, the movie doesn't really help differentiate the different night. What what is happening this night was male lead is trying to tell female lead that he was he's not he's not the real Manny. He's there he was trying to buy them out of their debt because but you know, of course, because this is a movie a bad rom com movie, he can't do that because his emotions are like just she she just keeps interrupting him. Manny and Butler are going around to to the three places that they've established where he might be, and he's not at any of them because of course he's not. And they're at the bar and they're saying that um that the mom is gonna be pissed, and then curly hair overhears them, and then the next day oh they have sex by the way, male and female lead. But the next morning, Curly Hair sends female lead a text message saying that male lead is actually the son of the people who are trying to buy the land. And instead of immediately denying it like somebody who is in the heat of lust would, she immediately just accepts it and then calls Curly Hair like, oh my god, I'm so betrayed, I can't believe it. And then she confronts male lead, and then they kind of have like a falling out, because, you know, of course they did. And it was at this point, my whole family, we were watching the movie together, and I'm like, this doesn't make sense, why does she immediately accept that the information from this guy? Granted, yeah, he might be a family friend, but you're supposedly in love with this new guy that you've known for less than a week generally the first thing that you would do is deny 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 anything bad because that's how the honeymoon phase works then they do that uh melody's like no you don't understand you don't understand i tried to tell you i i didn't know who i was i didn't know anything about all this i didn't know about love until i met you and in that exact scene, my brother said that exact same line. He said, until I met you at the exact same time. And that was really the highlight of the movie for me because it was so predictable that he called it out just like that. Oh, she's like, you know, saying, oh, get off my land, get off my land. Then the uh, business acquisitioners, like the mom, the big business come in and then, uh, oh, shall we talk this over? And that's what they do. At the table, like where they're discussing it, the mom's like, yeah, so all of your debt has already been like sent to collections. So what we're trying to do is we're going to give you, we're going to give you two options. Either we can buy the land directly from you or we'll just wait until the debt keeps on piling up and then we'll just buy you out of your debt and you guys get nothing. Which do you want? And then female lead is just like, no, I don't want to. And then it's also at this scene that we learned that a mom signed over the land to a female lead, which is why she is able to say, we're not selling. So you guys have been in this spot for almost three years. In an earlier scene, we saw you putting your wedding ring at your fiance and father's grave. And we we're just like, why wasn't that, that engagement ring the first thing to go? Because generally when you're in a tight spot, you sell off the unessentials, wedding rings, 
random stuff, the couch, the TV, the car, all that stuff. All that stuff is the first to go. So it's just, why is it, why wasn't that the first thing to go? You kept on to that for three years? In an earlier scene after the one that I just described, well, they're on this hill that's going to be the saving, you know, the thing that ultimately saves it was um a bottle of wine that she gave him. But the bottle of wine was brewed by the dad and it was mentioned that the dad brought over the vine in a suitcase and it was actually it was the last of the actual that specific species of grapes that got wiped out in italy or france i don't remember where and they got wiped out because of a virus that just wiped them all out and that's why the wine that it mates was so good the problem again arises why wasn't the wine the first thing to go because we actually find out that she has 40 fucking cases of this thing and two full goddamn barrels and it's at this point that i was fuming i was so pissed we're not you know i was pissed at a bad movie as how you were i wasn't actually angry but i was just like this woman this this dumb bitch has let it get to this point where your debt has been sent off to collections and you're just like oh i'm not selling i never thought of this wine as a possibility maybe instead of trying to be such a hard ass you should actually focus on the finances of everything that's going on she's a bad character I'm going to say that. Later that same day, Mel Lead was at the rental house that the real Manny and the butler were at while this whole thing was going down. I don't know how they planned on getting out of that whole situation after if he had acquired. He is going to give them the bottle of wine that female Lead had given him. But yeah, taste this. And butler takes a swig of it. He's like, oh my God, you need to taste this. He says to Manny. And he's like, oh wow, no, this is really good. Then they take it to, take it to a wine taster. And then the wine is like, wow, this is really good. Then they have this really half-hearted bullshit confrontation with curly hair and Mel lead at the house. I was called the ranch house. At the ranch house. And they're just like, oh, curly hair. Curly hair was doing the whole indignant thing. But the, the problem is, dude, you tried to sexually assault her earlier in the movie. You're not redeemable. I don't care how, how close a family friend you guys were. His character is now irredeemable because he tried to sexually assault someone. So they did that whole thing and then uh, he lets them pass because of something that he said. And then, yeah, he sees female lead. Then he's just, this wine, you guys, really good. Do you have any more of it? She checks the cellar. And then this is actually when we find out that that she had 40 cases and two full goddamn barrels of this wine that the dad made before he died. The wine taster says, wow, this, this is actually some pretty quality stuff you got here would you mind leasing out your vines to us and then we can um we can pay you and everything and then this was the thing this 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 was the thing that saved the ranch that that got them out of all of their debts and i was just like that's that's bullshit it's bullshit because you know that's not how leasing things out work if they were at the point where their debt was sent to collection it's past the point where somebody's telling you something the day that somebody who was trying to buy your land would fix that the lease is more like an investment it grows over time so it's not going to be the oh my god the ranch is saved thing no no that's not i mean that's how they're planning it out so then they go to a christmas party we see the mom looking exactly the same that she has. She just doesn't have all that oxygen hooked up. She, she looks happy and normal. Then we cut to three years, or I think. I think it's three years later. And they just killed the mom off like that. And when I mean like that, it was so fast. Literally, it was hilarious. I laughed so hard. <laughs> and I didn't laugh because the mom died. I laughed because of how quickly they did it. She was looking her best at the party and then boom, in memory of mom. I'm like, wow, not even a fucking funeral service. <laughs> and then they do a long pan where we show that the grapevines, their ranch is now a vineyard. I don't know how you go from one to the other in such a short amount of time. And the movie ends this. Like I said, I actually did have a hard time. Like, I actually dialed it back a bit. My criticisms were much, much harsher. But knowing that this was written and the movie was filmed within the same year really kind of shows. They say it's cheesy, but it's not really cheesy. It's more infuriating. Infuriating would be the better word to describe this film. But it's it makes sense when you turn off your brain. The problem is I actually like watching these movies to pick them apart, so... Yeah.
anyway, uh, yeah, it's been a dope year. It, it hasn't. This, this was in the midst of a global pandemic. But yeah, uh, so thank you for watching and listening to me. Like, this is probably the most rambly I have ever been in a video. So yeah, thank you for picking through that with me. I hope that this video is good. And yeah, Happy New Year.